Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation to approve this presented. We have a recommendation to approve motion. So moved. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? We have a second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote unanimous. The motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is something to celebrate, and I'm extremely excited. So I'd like to invite um, Chief Academic Officer Dr. Lucas Rick Ford to discuss the 2023 DSBA exemplary board status. Right, Rick? Absolutely. So, gentlemen, um, as you know, uh, a lot goes into this uh, this status, this opportunity uh, for, for for you guys for the, for the board of education. And so, GSBA, uh, there are uh, multiple levels, multiple tiers, and the exemplary is is the, the best tier that you can be at. That's the highest tier uh, for our board. And so, uh, I just want to. Uh, tell you guys congratulations and that this is something to celebrate. Uh, here is the press release. Uh, this is it to just show the logo and we also have a certificate uh, that we will uh, come out uh, right now for the photograph or are we going to yes. yep. right now? Yeah. All right. So this, uh, as the press release says, um, it's a recognition program. Uh, I, I know that this is a multiple years. Uh, we've run this for several years in a row, uh, and it's something, again, to be extremely, extremely proud of, and uh, you gentlemen should uh, definitely be honored to continue to, to, to uh, receive this exemplary reward status. And this isn't a requirement by any stretch of imagination. You all choose to participate in this and to um, attend sessions and to continue to learn on what it means to um, assist in leading school district with each other and um, you are always Johnny on the spot and ready to do what it takes and to learn all the new stuff and I want to thank you for that. You are appreciated. I hear stories from around the state and I can say we are blessed. So. Absolutely and also just before I forget the trophy plaque, if you will, similar to the one that sits in, in the corner, that will come in December. Uh, we want to go ahead and let the pledge to know that you received it so that we can uh, you know, get the information out there, get the press release out there, and we have the certificate for the voter. Thank you, Dr. Luther, for helping to facilitate that program. We appreciate it, and it's always a joy to participate in those training sessions. Thank y'all. Y'all come around and let's just get a smile and photo for an exemplary board. You have to line us up. Glenn ain't here. I got you. <laughs>
That's your SACS accreditation here. And so then moved to Advanced Ed and now Cognia. So the first SACS accreditation that our elementary schools received was in 1998. And that's because SACS first began accrediting high schools, only high schools. Then they moved to middle schools and then finally elementary schools. So in 1998, again, is when our elementary schools were first accredited through SACS and now Cognia. And that's why they're receiving this 25 years of excellence accreditation. Our middle school was, or the first time that a middle school in Fannin County was accredited was in 1977. So their next milestone will be the 50-year mark in 2027. The first time that we had a high school accredited in Fannin County was in 1934. So the next milestone for our high school now will be in 2034, and that will be the 100-year milestone. So not only do our elementary schools deserve applause, I feel like approaching those numbers for middle school and high school, I think they all deserve a round of applause for sure. So absolutely. So with that said. Yes. Well, we did a little research, not just with the numbers. And then excellent is a hard thing to achieve, but they have maintained it. And I'm so proud of our schools and I'm proud of our history. But for 25 years, we did a little research and we wanted to see who the principals for the elementary schools were for over those 25 years. So at Blue Ridge Elementary, that would be Mark Henson, Brenda Payne, Shannon Miller, Dr. April Hodges, and Mark Young. For East Fannin Elementary, Cynthia Painter, Dr. Michael Watney, Bonnie Angel, Cindy Dicks, Sarah Rigdon, and Matthew Price. And West Fannin Elementary, David Crawford, Glenn Patterson, Karen Walton, Robert Gensley, Lucas Ruth, and Allison Danner. So um, it was fun looking up that history and, and just realizing that we don't do anything in isolation. Like we have built on, you know, each year on the past successes of those that come before us. And I hope that we continue to do that tradition. So with that said, Dr. Ruth will get the current rock stars that's doing the hard work to come down. Absolutely. All the school principals, please bring your uh, 25 years of Cognia excellence with you. Those flags that I continuously send you text messages for you not to forget to bring. Right. And more than all, they're getting their flags so we can go around front so you can have your photo. Not a way to clap for something that's exciting. <laughs>
essentially the entire last year, starting in last September or October, all the way to now, to analyze these, think carefully about them, and make sure that they truly fit what we're trying to accomplish in our school system. And so with that said, these do come to you at this time to humbly ask for your approval. With that said, I'd like to make a recommendation to approve this presented. If you have a recommendation, I have a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the police statement and the mission statement. Any discussion? All those in favor? Those unanimous, motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is our 2023-2024 strategic plan, how we're going to get to accomplishing that mission and vision. Dr. Ruth? Absolutely. And the same process, similar to the vision, the mission, and the police, when it comes to the entire strategic plan, this entire plan was also vetted by our district and school improvement team, all the members of that team, and carefully analyzed and carefully reviewed, again, to make sure it's truly capturing the goals that we collectively want to have along with those action steps. So, Mrs. Tipton, there we go. So, strategic goal one, I'm not going to redo every single action step. Again, as you gentlemen know, this was provided to you in advance for you to review ahead of time. Strategic goal one, though, is attaining a high level of student achievement. Strategic goal two, to develop organizational effectiveness. And strategic goal three, ensuring stakeholder support and satisfaction. So, with that said, again, knowing that you had the opportunity to review in advance, and with this document carefully analyzed by our district and school improvement team, we again come to you to ask for approval of the strategic plan. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve as presented. I make a recommendation to approve the strategic plan. Do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? The vote is unanimous. Motion approved. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is school governance team update. Excuse me, Dr. Linda Spruce. Absolutely. So, we, at Blue Ridge Elementary, we did have a meeting September 14th. And again, these are all the meetings that took place in between the previous board meeting that made it onto the document, the previous board meeting, and now this board meeting. So, Blue Ridge Elementary met on September 14th, had two field trip requests, and there's notable work that took place at Blue Ridge Elementary. They had Title I, II, and IV budgets approved, and then discussed many important topics there at their SGT. East End fundraiser requests, they had those, three of those approved. And then also, Title I was approved at this meeting. Lots of discussion took place, as you can see. And then they also had a call meeting on September 20th, where Mr. Price came back and led the meeting to approve their Title I and their Title IV budget, and also have another fundraiser request that was approved. West End had three field trip requests. This was on September 19th, and lots of discussion. Also, Mr. Denham took time to make sure the Title I, Title II, and Title IV budgets all were approved. Middle school. Now we're getting middle school and high school, more and more fundraiser and field trip requests. Lots of fundraiser requests there, several field trip requests. Also, Dr. Hodges there assured that those budgets, the Title I, Title II, Title IV, Title V, all those budgets were approved by SGT. And then moving on to high school, several fundraiser requests, several field trip requests, and several 
this all the user requests. As you can see, that high school HTC remains uh, uh, very busy even on the day of the meetings. And um, uh, Dr. Ramsey assured that, that his federal budgets were approved, Title II, Title IV, and Title V, all approved along with other discussion. Um, aside from that, just a, a quick uh, uh, item to go over here. Overall, at this point, with Sick Leave Bank, all SGTs have the opportunity to um, provide feedback, uh, carefully um, talk to their constituents uh, at the school level inside of those communities, and uh, all five SGTs are um, highly interested in that um, process of having a, a Sick Leave Bank for our, for our school system. So they're interested in for students to review different policies Absolutely. to see the impact on our school system. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's um, just, again, I want to give them the opportunity to uh, have a voice there and, and be able to have a voice of inside the school community for each school. Thank you, Dr. Rick. And just a reminder that the men's for HGT are housed at the school. Thank you, sir. If I can interject for a moment, I, I know that. Our principals provide leadership on the school governance teams. I want to thank you for that. And I also want to thank all the members of the school governance teams uh, for the work that they do. All of those items that we just went through, the board used to have to consider and vote on and approve. Um, we'd be here all night. <laughs> so I'm very, very thankful for the work that they do. And they know their school better than we do. Uh, we're members of the school team uh, and, and the community. Uh, so thankful for the school members teams and those who are in the show. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Next time on the agenda, I would like to invite Board Director of Curriculum Instruction, Ms. Heather Collis, to give us a simple office update on where we're headed in the curricular world. All right. We are here uh, to provide a, a brief presentation, uh, and I say brief, but we'll keep it classy, uh, a presentation over curriculum, uh, student learning, and professional learning. Um, just a reminder, of course, the vision that was actually just approved. Uh, you know, our system does hold a vision of excellence for all students with, it, with a successful progression at each level and 100% graduation rate. So, when we look at that vision, and we take that vision and apply it to, to our side of the world uh, with, with curriculum and instruction, uh, we're, we're talking about investing in every child every day to try to make sure that that student uh, gets uh, the best possible outcome that that student can have, to put that student in the best possible position to be successful, whatever that looks like for that particular student. Uh, and, and uh, I will turn the mic over and we'll share this presentation, but I do want to also just, I feel very blessed to work with the people that I work with when it comes to Dr. Buck, when it comes to Mrs. Tipton, and when it comes to Mrs. Collis, and I, I, I say that, uh, I, I just can't say enough about them. They're all extremely hard, hard workers and just uh, wonderful people. Thank you, and I'm excited to get to talk to you. Slightly nervous. Excited. Um, one thing that we made a goal was to make sure that we were in every classroom and we had conversations with every teacher. And I can stand before you and say that we accomplished that goal between the two of us. We have been in every classroom where we had conversations with every teacher in the entire district because we want to get a pulse on where they are with everything. And one of the points of conversation that we had was how do you define success? Because the state's telling us how they define success, but how do you define it? And what we learned across the board from every teacher was that success was individualized for each student. And the thing that thread the needle throughout all of it was growth, improvement that students learned while they were with them. And it showed them that was success. So then that led us into more conversations about how do you measure that, which of course leads to assessment. And we're not driven by assessment. We're driven by setting our students up to be successful. But part of that is that they perform well in their assessments because that makes them feel better and sets them up in a better position. So as we've had these conversations, we've been very careful to focus on student 
learning and student success is to make everything centered around our students. And when you do that, you appeal to a teacher's heart because they love their kids. And so as we've had these conversations and we've talked about success and we've talked about how to define it, how to measure it, we realize that we have to look at two things. We have to look at hard data and we have to look at soft data. That's right, quantitative and qualitative data. And, and we, you know, we, we looked at that, we analyzed it uh, carefully, uh, uh, data uh, over, the, over the past years, uh, longitudinal data. And then also, I guess, looking at that qualitative data, getting into those classrooms, talking to, talking to teachers. Um, and what we realized, uh, looking at conclusions uh, from that, from that data analysis, uh, three major components. One is to, to have a reset uh, of standard-based learning. When we say learning, uh, not instruction because learning is student centered, and so you know to, to have a reset there, um, and, and that's a, you know our classroom standards. Just making sure that all teachers uh, truly, truly understand the classroom standards that they're teaching. You know, there's content weights. So when I say that, I'm talking about like content weights on the Georgia milestones, for instance. Making sure that uh, the amount of time spent in the classroom matches up with the content weights on those assessments. And also depth of knowledge. So that's uh, you know looking at if we're looking at the assessment, um, like the Georgia milestones, where a student can score level one, level two, level three, level four. To get those level three and level four results, you have to have depth of knowledge level three and four in the classroom to get those results. And I say all that you know talked about the test a few times there. We're not saying that we're focused on the test because all we care about is the test. Um, we're saying that we know that our teachers are working extremely hard, harder than any teachers that I know. We know that our students are working extremely hard, extremely hard. We want to make sure that that hard work, that level of hard work, matches exactly with what happens on the, uh, with the outcomes of the standardized test. We want them to match. And so that way, if they match and that hard work matches the results, that gives our teachers an opportunity to celebrate. That gives our students an opportunity to celebrate. So again, it's not that we necessarily think the test is the end all be all. We just want that opportunity for teachers to celebrate and kids to celebrate. And so that's why uh, we, we definitely uh, focus on those three things mentioned there. So then what we've done is we've gone in and we've asked teachers to do two things differently. We've not asked them to overturn the entire apple cart, and we've not asked them to throw out the baby with the bathwater. We said there are two things that we think we can get a big impact from if we're just doing them a little differently. One of those things is how we use our data. Teachers are notorious to look at last year's test data and beat themselves up over anything that they think didn't go wrong to change what they're doing based on those results from last year and then they get this year's kids, and they weren't last year's kids, and they're having to regroup again. So what we're going to do is we're going to start getting data to our teachers early for the kids that they're going to have next, and start working on getting data to them sooner so that they can look at the data for the kids who are sitting in their rooms or who are going to be sitting in their rooms. That's going to capitalize on a lot of time. And the other thing that we ask them to do is this big fancy educational work called differentiation, but what it really means is you do what's best for that kid. You get that kid what that kid needs. If it's something that you already went over with the entire class and most of them have it and that kid doesn't stop, take time, go back and make sure they get it. It's okay to do that. We're not worried about covering content. We're worried about teaching students to get each student what they need. And that appeals to a teacher's heart. So what we've done in an effort to get this ball rolling is um, I've been in every school and I sat down with the teachers and we've had these conversations. We've made sure that we are all on the same page and that we all believe in the same direction that we're heading. And we've looked at their data, we conducted some observations, and then there's some amazing professional learning that is set up for these teachers right now. And that is all thanks to Dr. Connie Huff. She has laid the groundwork for this. She started this last year. And, and the results that you're going to see are going to be a result of years of work that's gone into this. But 
but she has some amazing professional learning set up for our teachers this year. But we're going to go back and we're going to refocus on those three things. All right, so the, the previous slide showed the professional learning. Uh, again, no reason to, to the stand and list all those. Uh, we, we, again, we'd be here all night like you were talking about, but we do have amazing professional learning lined up. Uh, how do we get there? Uh, that's the next uh, focus. And one thing we know that we really have to have to do starting now, and we've already had conversations with our kindergarten teachers and first grade teachers, and we'll continue to have those conversations at each level, is find that balance between teacher ownership and what are the non-negotiables. So for instance, um, we know that teachers crave the ability to be creative with how they approach certain standards in their classroom. They, they want that autonomy, they want that ownership. At the same time though, we know that there are certain things that we have to put in place, for instance, that all kindergarten teachers must do with the Pan school system, and all fourth grade teachers must do with the Pan school system, uh, so on and so forth. So we want to really focus hard on, on finding that balance. Uh, kindergarten and first grade teachers have already let us know that the, the phonics instruction, the phonemic awareness uh, instruction that, 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 we, that we brought to the table, that our academic coaches and Dr. Huck brought to the table, they want to keep that as a non-negotiable. But we also have, have realized that you know there's different places, again, where we can uh, allow our teachers to, to have uh, some more ownership with, with some of the, the way that they propose their standards. And another uh, uh, item here is to commit to provide time and resources. Resources is not a, a you know, that's not a problem for us. Time, of course, is, is a, a big, that's an issue anywhere you go, anywhere in the world. But we're committed to try to find time uh, to, to carve out to provide our teachers, continue to provide our teachers with more and more professional learning that they can allow them to, to get better and better. And so you know, we're committed to look creatively to, to find that time. So as we dreamt and had visions about what the future of curriculum is in Pan County, Dr. Ruth has done a very good job of keeping me also set on, okay, what are our goals and what is our timeline for this? Because it's really easy to dream big and then to put it actually in writing and to go somewhere with it. So we have come up with these goals, and I know you guys were provided with them earlier to review for this year. Um, in a nutshell, by the end of the year, we're going to have mapped out the curriculum at each grade level. So no matter whose classroom you're in, no matter what school you're in, you're going to see similarities in all kindergarten classes or in all first grade classes. But again, the things that are not negotiable for the teachers have decided are key to what they're doing. And then we also, in addition to that, have set some goals for the future. Absolutely. And so goals for the future, uh, and that's uh, over the coming years, uh, implementation of standards-based learning, and that involves benchmarking, uh, data analysis, and different uh, differentiated instruction, and to continue our data days, and to refine curriculum maps to encompass all levels of learning. And so those curriculum maps, again, those are powerful. Uh, those provide uh, all kinds of opportunities for our teachers when it comes to uh, instruction and, and to refine benchmark assessment, use, and differentiated instruction at each at each level. And just the overall message that we want to hear everybody say in Penny County is that we teach students. We don't teach standards. We don't teach a test. We teach people. We teach kids. And so hopefully that's going to be the feedback that you all are going to hear as well. Thank you. Thank you. You all get an amen from me. And I'm extremely proud of this administrative team on the district leadership, the principals at the schools, and your um, administrative support at your schools, your assistant principals. The real work, though, is when the rubber hits the road in the classroom with that classroom teacher. And the only reason we exist as administrators is to support them in their work and to clear the runway so that they can do the real work that needs to be done. And I am blessed to say that every administrator sitting in this room and those back at the school share that belief because you show it with your action. And I just want to take a moment to say I appreciate you for that. Thank you. Excuse me for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next item on the agenda.
it is one of my favorite items that we have every month, unless it's full happenings. Ms. Allison Tanner can tell us all that's happening at West Van. Well, there are lots of exciting things going on at West Van, and I just like would like to let you know how much an honor it is for me to be able to extend to you guys the things that are going on at West. I would like to say, just as Ms. Norman just said, that we get to stand up here and present to you guys all day long about the things that are going on, but who really needs to be here presenting to you are probably our students and our teachers because they're the ones that put in the work daily that make these things happen. Um, so we just want you guys to know that that's where the actual success is, as Ms. Norman said. Um, well, with that being said, we'll go ahead. Um, together we're unlocking a world of possibilities. That's our focus at West Vandering this year, and it was kind of as I was sitting and listening to Ms. Collins and Dr. Ruth present, our work for the year was intentional, and we want to make sure that we are being intentional and in getting to know each of our students, that we are recognizing our staff members and knowing their individual differences and the things that they're going on and what we can do to clear those paths for them, and then also getting to know our parents and our community that's surrounding our school because without those three things we're not going to be successful so we sit back and we think and i want to just again let our district know how much we appreciate because i think above all years that i've been in administration our teachers and our staff are truly feeling the intentionality of the things that are going on within the school and that they are being heard and that you guys are considering all the things that they're saying and how much they appreciate that. So, thank you. All right, so we have lots of new staff members this year. I feel like we hit the jackpot when we started selecting this. It's not often that you get to hire oh, 10 new faces um, to a staff. Actually, it was 11 and we've already lost one of those, but we're at 10. Um, and how exciting it is to know that when you find that many candidates, you are successful at each of the hires that the board allows you to do. So, we have Miss Amy Allen who came to us um, just from a neighboring county, and she's teaching first grade. We have Miss Jennifer Danner who's bringing to us a whole new perspective on the art world with her knowledge of that area. We have Miss Tiffany Herb who is not new to the Bangor County school system. She has played several roles but has completed her teaching degree and we're glad to have her as a third grade teacher. We have Mr. Andrew Ladd who was a Bannon County graduate but was in a neighboring county and chose to come back to us. We have Mr. Raymond Mull and Ms. Caitlin Snyder. Ms. Caitlin Snyder was also a Bannon County alumni who chose to come back to us. Ms. Bailey Stone and then we have Mr. Tony Sirianni, um, Kristen Hunt, and Ms. Hannah White. When I look at these, you know, some of these people I actually call. So now that they're teaching us, <laughs> that makes it a little hard to take them. But it's okay. They're doing a great job. And we're very excited. A couple of them sometimes get confused with the kids, but that's okay too. Um, they're doing a phenomenal job, and I just can't brag enough on them that the energy they're bringing to the school. So, um, again, one of those things that we really wanted to focus on is we want our teachers to know that they're appreciated. We want them to know that we want them to have fun. And so, these are just a glimpse of some of the things that have gone on. One of our favorites is the rodeo. When the rodeo clown comes to watch the teachers race, you wouldn't think that on those stick horses that it's very competitive. Don't let Miss Mills fool you, she was not going to lose. Um, so, and then we also were able to have um, a lunch provided. One day we actually had um, hamburgers that Mr. Drury slaved over the grill, but he not got some hamburgers for everybody during pre planning so they didn't have to go out and get lunch and we could kind of conserve some time so we could do our meeting during that. And then, um, the Ridge community provided pizza and brownies for them on the day of open house so they didn't have to go out and have extra time in their rooms. 
Again, just to add as Dr. Roof and Ms. Collins had said, we have had an abundance of training from our teachers this year. It has been an amazing event. I can't wait to see all of those things come to fruition. Our teachers are engaged and they're loving all the things that we've had. Um, really focusing on how we need to incorporate the foundations of reading in our lower grades and the importance of K-1 and 2 and just implementing those foundations. So that's just a picture of some of our kids take, or our teachers taking part in learning because teachers continue to learn as well. Um, the next picture is also support of that. We were very fortunate to have the Master Gardeners came out. Um, I think we've had our greenhouse Mr. Inslee, has it been 10 plus years since we've had the greenhouse? Um, and we've had lots of transition at West Haven over the last 10 years. And so a lot of our teachers were not familiar with how to operate the greenhouse, so we wanted to make sure that we got that back on par. Um, so Ms. Mitchell set up so that the Master Gardeners could come out along with um, Ms. Rhonda from the Ag Department and we could learn how to fully function with the greenhouse. So that's something that we're excited. And of course we had Dr. Lyon that came in and did some stuff with um, STEM process and STEM journaling. Open house, that's when it all starts that we begin to build that community with our parents and let them understand that we are truly open door policy and that we want them in our building. Something that we've noticed even as early as elementary is that our, we continue to put technology into our kids' hands. It starts becoming too accessible for them even as early as kindergarten and that they have free access to the things that they get on. And the, the scary part is, is that people are so smart now that they can trick kids into getting into these things on YouTube and programs that are supposed to be really simple. So we had, um, Brian Buckington from Tiny Reese to come and do a lesson on cybersecurity with our parents at Open House just to make them aware of some of the dangers that there were with kids being on technology. We also shared our Title I and just to encourage people to take part in those events, we had door prizes for those people that attended the two sessions. First day of school, oh my, that's the best part of being a teacher is seeing all those smiling faces on the first day of school and just seeing that student engagement, watching them run in. Um, I think Mr. Uh, Tracy Summer said it best, is when we watch kids get out of the car in the mornings and they're actually running in the building, we're being successful because they're excited about being there. Um, so that's a great day. Um, just making sure that the kids are having fun. It's not always about the standards. As Ms. Um, Hollis said, we want to make sure that those kids know that they're loved and that school is a place to have fun. Um, and we have to recognize we want them to be there and it's important for their attendance and it's not always their fault they're not there because they're not old enough to drive yet. So we have to recognize that, but we also know if they're encouraged to be there by having fun, that they're going to push their parents to get them there every day. So we are doing random attendance awards where they can receive just a random day and say, okay, it's an attendance award today. Everybody gets 15 minutes of extra recess or everybody gets a free popsicle, whatever. And I don't know when those days are coming, so hopefully that will encourage them to be there. Um, water days, snow cones, anything that we can do just to incorporate it and make it fun for them. Just a glimpse of some of the activities that they get to do in specials. Um, again, writing on, we've had lots of transition in those positions as well. Um, new PE teacher, Miss um, Ladd, is doing an amazing job with those kids. Watching the kids skipping into school now, they're learning to skip. You would think that kids didn't know how to do that anymore, <laughs> but there's so much of that technology stuff that a lot of kids don't know how to skip anymore. So, um, did have a picture of Mr. Drury actually skipping with them too, but I didn't put that one on there. Um, so, just watching them learn those things along with learning about science tools and music and having the older children come in and read to them in their classrooms. It's just enjoyable watching them grow and all those things as they have those experiences. Then we take them outside to experience outdoors. We have our frog bog, which has finally come to fruition. It's been full scale now. It actually has water running, filtering through. Um, 
Her street, that's one of their projects. They actually have put tadpoles in, and we have frogs now. We may have a lot of frogs because there's lots of tadpoles in that pond. As you can see, there's Ms. Allen holding one of our little critters that escaped to the playground from the frog pond. Looking at the bees, and then our fifth grade class continuing to use the stream and doing the water testing just to see what impact all the development that's going on on Highway 5 is going to have to the water on Madigan County. So, lots of exciting things. Parent engagement. We are so fortunate with our parents at West Canaan and continuing to build those. I think our PTO is at an all-time high, the number of participants that we have in that. And they are really helping us to build those things. We've had volunteers, as you can see in all of these pictures, just making sure that we're reaching out to anybody that has a special skill that we can build on. So, we continue to do that. Again, our PTO supports, if you want to go ahead and this. Our PTO really supports us in having our mornings with moms and donuts with dads. This idea was brought to us by one of our parents a couple of years ago, and our PTO took it and kind of ran with it. And through those and our power hour, which I'll explain, we've had over, because we had one today, over 350 parents on campus since school began participating in um, activities so that they can be on campus to see their kids during the school day. Our power hour is where um, parents can come in. We do it by grade level. They get to eat with their students, and then we pull them aside for 10 or 15 minutes where they get to talk with the individual teachers about things that are going on in the classroom and answer questions about curriculum or anything else that they may have. Family literacy night is always a big hit when we're doing our book fair. This year, ours was unlocking the world of possibilities for reading. So each child received a passport, and they had to participate in certain events. And once their passport was complete, they received a medal for participating in federal world travels. So that was exciting. Again, just making sure that we reach outside our doors and build that community engagement. This is um, a screenshot of all the community partnerships that we have had throughout the school year with the Fayette County Public Library, Master Gardeners, what a resource they are for us, and they are willing to come in and do absolutely anything from pouring concrete papers to whatever they need to do. Um, 4-H, um, can't forget Cleo the Clown coming from um, the bus department. Dogs of the American Revolution, Sons of the Revolution, the National Honor Guard. We are just so fortunate that we have that, and of course our snack and backpack. Because um, I can't tell you how many backpacks and how much food they deliver to our kids weekly, so that's amazing. And then we have SPLOST. Oh my, what transitions we have had at West Hannon. So I think one of the biggest things that we had accomplished this year that looks amazing is, which I heard we took a little history away, but we were going to make history on our own if we didn't remove those bleachers because they were a little dangerous. Um, so we had the concession stand and the bleachers removed that were formerly there from when West Ham was a high school. That's memories for me too because I cheered on that field, so I get it. Um, my dad played football on the field. But it was not safe anymore, so we have had that removed, and now that area is completely fenced in. It's beautiful, and it just provides us an area that our kids are able to be outside and they're safe. Um, without the squats, we would not have been able to do that. We're also able to fence that in, so coming down Damascus in the front, it is completely fenced in, secure, so the kids are safe in that area. Um, again, just to make sure that we're looking at um, renovations to the school. Um, we had our floors redone in the cafeteria. Wow, what a change that made. Heard nothing but wonderful things about those. Um, it looked, one of our students actually said it made our cafeteria much more appealing. But, um, and then we did some safety features that we don't care to go into detail about because then they wouldn't necessarily be safety features. So we have those. And then last but not least, we are honored to have Ms. Katie Robertson as the Fannie County School System Teacher of the Year. 
So Katie was actually, her first year teaching, she took over my classroom. And I probably shouldn't say this, but at the time she was actually dating my nephew as well. Um, so to watch her progress, she was my child's kindergarten teacher. So to watch her progress and to grow as she has is amazing. And I think one of our students said it best. Um, sometimes we think that our kiddos aren't able to really truly say what they have. But we had a student that wanted to show Ms. Robertson her appreciation and how deserved she was. So she wrote her letter and left it hanging on her door the next morning. So I was just going to read that. And it says, Dear Ms. Robertson, I never had you as a teacher, but I know from friends that you are an amazing one. In first grade, I wanted you so bad when I did not get you. I was so mad. Good job on getting teacher of the year. You deserve it. Um, this comes from Ms. Willow Styles. And to know that our kids still feel that way about our teachers, I think that is what makes us do what we do. And that was probably better than any award that Ms. Robertson could have received is knowing that a student felt that way about her. So that's just a glimpse of what's going on in this camp. And I appreciate you giving me the time to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, understand what the concrete bleachers might be nostalgic, but uh, we had the same issue at the high school, and I personally witnessed several people fall. Uh, thankfully, they were not seriously injured, but they were injured. Those little concrete bleachers do get dangerous, so that looks much, much nicer and certainly is much safer. Congratulations on all of those <laughs> accomplishments. That uh, sounds like everything is working very nicely in West Ham. Thank you. Mr. Danner, do we have any public comment? Uh, no, ma'am. All right, with that said, then on to agenda item number 13 and facilities update. Facilities so update, uh, before we get on the slides, uh, Dr. Spartan, as of yesterday morning, 572 work orders since July the 1st. That's in 69 work orders. That's uh, 8.3 work orders a day. So again, Dr. Spartan's. Uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, this is at the uh, middle school. Dr. Hodges and her team reached out. Uh, this is at the field house. Uh, and this is not complete. Um, uh, so again, they're going to make some stall, stalls in there. But again, the, the bathroom, they're going to make some stalls in there. Um, uh, but again, uh, she said, you know, we do something. Washer and dryer's been moved into one room. The washer and dryer was in a bathroom. And, uh, and in that bathroom, uh, we took one of the uh, took one of the toilets out, want to make it a handicap accessible, uh, put an FRP board up to cover up the panel. Uh, and again, I, I said I wouldn't do this, but again, Dr. Hodges and, and middle school used some of their slots a lot uh, to put the, the new flooring in the fill house. And, uh, but again, you know, during all that project and everything, but the bathrooms need to be done. Uh, Glenn Harvison reached out and wanted to know, get a little timeline on, on the, the stadium project. Just give me a, a sort of a summary of this, so I get a little credit for this. On May the 25th, that's when we purchased the property at the high school, um, the 154 acres and everything. So planning begun. Uh, again, the board and the, the, the system was very fortunate to purchase an additional property that you know, that, that attached to that other 156. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, so we had an additional 66 acres. So again, planning again uh, sort of changed a little bit. Uh, it did change, but again, we sort of expanded um, because I had to throw mm -hmm. that in there. So uh, but again, you know, phase one of the plan was we had to fix that problem. So, uh, uh, so back in May the 19th of 2023, uh, the board approved the state and grain project. That got completed over the summer, just prior to the school beginning. And uh, wait a minute. So we just a couple pictures there, just as a reminder of what what that took place. Uh, then you know, just last you know, a couple weeks ago, uh, the board approved the, the ag greenhouse, and then we had a groundbreaking there at the ag facility. And uh, and again, had to put the kids in there because the, the smiling faces. So again, and then. Just last week, we had an athletic ground uh, groundbreaking over at the, at the stadium, and, uh, and again, had to put the kids in there. So what, what you see there is pictures of each school. That's the tennis team and the senior representative, and the coach, softball, and, and the senior representative, <coughs> and the baseball 
coaches and their senior representatives. And, and again, just uh, had to put the, the conceptual drawing up there. Uh, had, a, had a great meeting uh, yesterday with our architect and our, our CEO. Again, just moving forward. Um, again, you know, everything takes time, but again, very excited about what's, what the future holds. Thank you, Mr. Gaynor. Okay, Mr. Chair, item number 14 is to approve freezer as surplus property. Mr. Uh, Dr. Ramsey uh, is always asking for something. You know, now he's always. seen the stories, that, <laughs> which, uh, which I completely understand. So uh, uh, we tossed around uh, several ideas. Uh, uh, Mr. Right here. The freezer is actually located in the freezer building just below the field house, close to the old restaurant. I know y'all are uh, building the building, <coughs> and inside that building is this freezer. So I went and took some pictures, found an asset number, went to Miss uh, uh, Martha. I said, Mark, Martha, I need to know everything you can tell me about this, uh, this freezer. So um, uh, I don't know how her and her team. Uh, started digging out some uh, some information. The freezer was actually purchased in October of 1989. Um, and, and at first, uh, uh, Martha talked to Ken Susan. Ken Susan said, "Hey, that's before my time, it's going to have to be Miss Mitchell." So at the teacher of the year banquet, Miss Mitchell was there. So I asked Miss Mitchell, "When did that take place?" She said, "Hey, that was before my time." So this was prior to that. So again, purchased in '89 was taking off of actual inventory in 2002. So again, that freezer just sitting down there. So I got maintenance come over, got Mr. Uh, Mr. Farley come over. I said, Mike, can we use this thing? And, and uh, he just sort of gave me that look. And I said, we just need to get rid of it. He said, well, no way. And we had a couple of maintenance guys there who, uh, who liked to hunt. And they said, hey, you might, you might get something out of that. These people that have these places in Kentucky and whatever. So, uh, so uh, even though it's not been used in over 20 years, um, number one, we need the space. So I'm requesting that we, re we declare this uh, surplus, put it out to bid. The advertisements in there will follow all of our policies, and um, uh, we will start this immediately. We'll put this on the website uh, if approved, uh, as early as tomorrow. And then uh, hopefully in November, we'll come back with some sort of, of offer from the community. Uh, if we don't get any offers on the community, uh, we'd like to declare it salvage so we can get rid of that information or get rid of that area and get it cleaned up, turn it over to the high school and shut things up for at least two or three days. Minutes. Minutes. A couple minutes. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a um, recommendation to approve this presented, please. All right, we have a recommendation to approve the future surplus property. Is that your motion? So we uh, Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Those unanimous motion approved. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to approve to extend the property manager agreement. Mr. Danner? Uh, yes, ma'am. In 21, again, you know, we come to you uh, to have somebody, uh, we actually put this out to, to the public. Uh, we had some people uh, make requests uh, to be our property manager. So again, uh, that was approved back in 21. Last year we renewed. Uh, actually, the board approved the renewal. It's time for another renewal. So I would like to continue to renewal to the property manager, Mr. Jeff Coyne, who has done an absolute tremendous job keeping up with the property and, uh, and, and doing anything we ask him to to help us out in the future. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation to approve this presented, please. Very well. Recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Make that motion. And a second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Those unanimous. Motion is approved. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to approve the purchase and sale of real estate in Lawrence Park. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation to approve this presented, please. Good evening, Madam Superintendent, the board. And so what we have here tonight, I have for you our final report for June 2023. So this is everything that we have sent and submitted to the study of Georgia and signed off. So that's our general fund. So it has all of our accruals on there. And then we have our capital projects. And then our special revenues. 
And I do want to point out our schools that we approve their quarterly financial reports every quarter are not required to have budgets. So those, all those revenues and expenditures should not have budgets because they don't have to adopt those budgets. So that is why if you look at this report, um, the budget numbers, percentages are different because all of those entries for revenues and expenditures are included in this uh, special revenues report because that's also uploaded and included in the state numbers. That is our year end report finalized. That is the finalized that we signed off with the DOE um, for the year, and then that is our school expenditures for our special um, for school nutrition for the year. And now we have our August statements where we're 16.66. Percent complete of this year are um, general fund revenues and expenditures and our capital projects, our special revenue, and our school nutrition. And that presents our statements for this month. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation to approve this presented, please, sir. We have a recommendation to approve the financial report as presented. Do I hear a motion? You have a motion and a second. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? I would like to say thank you again for the updated format. It is much, much easier to read. Thank you. I, I, I it's so much easier for everybody. I think that looks really right. Very good. All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. The report is, uh, is approved. I'd also like to mention that it's difficult to read that scrolling on, on the screen, but that information is available on our website. Uh, so if you, if you want to go back and take a look at it, you're welcome to do so. Thank you, sir. Item number 17 is SWAS update. Ms. Wynn? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have, for this month, we received $860,000. $227.81 in September for the month of sales in August. That's 4.7% growth. So we've collected $23.899 million of our loss. We have $10.6 million left. And if the average collections continue, we will max out in September 2023. Thank you. Second, 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 all those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion is approved. Thank you. Next recommendation is also to include the completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. And um, this is for Taryn Lowen for a classified position effective 11-1-2023. This is actually transferring her um
Thank you, sir. And the next recommendation is for SEDS to employ in the completion of paperwork, background check, and training requirements. And that's for Isaac Ann Ingram for substitute, effective 10-16-2023. Her assignment will be school nutrition. Mr. Chair, make that recommendation. Do we have a recommendation? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Vote is unanimous. Motion to approve. Thank you. That concludes our personnel list. Mr. Chair, superintendent comments. And there's so much to comment on. When I sit and reflect on what happens between one board meeting to the next, I'm always amazed at all the work that everyone does. And like Ms. Finger said, that work starts and ends and concludes and culminates with the teachers. But we've had an exciting month. We've had the Teacher of the Year banquet. And like Ms. Finger said, Ms. Katie Robertson is our Fannie County School System Teacher of the Year. I'm very proud of her and all of our teachers. So I want to congratulate her. Ms. Allison, I thank you for your presentation and for all that you're doing and leading at West Fannie. The groundbreaking, like Mr. Dinger talked about, with a new athletic complex, that's going to be the start of more history. We've talked about a lot of history tonight, the 25 years, the project. So not only do we look back, but we're initiating history. The coaches that were at the groundbreaking, the students, our athletic director, our principal, community members, it was all appreciated. Homecoming week. Now talk about something that will wear you out. We had a homecoming parade for the downtown of the school. It was so much fun. Homecoming court. I felt so bad, though. It sprinkled rain on the girls until right about halfway through. But they looked beautiful, and it was such a wonderful event. Homecoming dance. It was pre-K week, so we go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Pre-K week, where we celebrated literacy and early learning. We were able to go read to the little ones. And there's a couple of directors that I won't necessarily point out, but I don't think they had classroom management of four-year-olds because they came back and told me how their book was stolen from them by a four-year-old, and then they went and laid on it, and they had to rodeo it up. Dr. Huff. Magic school bus. Mr. Easley, thank you for bringing that back, and that is appreciated. Ag Youth Fair. And I know I'm missing something, and that's just in the class for me. In addition to the leaders in our school and what our leaders do for our school, we have two team members with us in here tonight that have actually been asked to lead on the state-level initiative. So we not only have leaders from our Fannie County school system, but they've been recognized by the state. Dr. Lucas Reef was asked to serve on a discussion panel at the State Board of Education to the Department of Education to participate on the CTAE strategic plan and workforce development across the state. That's a huge honor. Dr. Reef, thank you for taking your expertise and helping the rest of the state. Dr. Ramsey, I'm very proud of you. You were selected as a member of the Board of Directors for the Georgia Association of Secondary School Principals. That's a huge honor, and it's a very important state organization. You were also asked to mentor aspiring principals and to be a member of that program and to serve on that committee, and that's a huge honor when you're selected from the whole state to help others grow. So proud of both of you. We're blessed to live in Fannie County. Amen. Mr. Danner, Dr. Reef, and I have been going to talk to different civic organizations, and we've been having an opportunity to tell our story and to talk with people. And we say the community is wonderful, but we've experienced the community is wonderful. We have been welcomed, embraced. People have asked for opportunities of how they can get involved in the school. Before I get into the 
for the next board meeting, there'll be an election. Um, early voting starts October the 16th. Election day is November the 7th. And of course, on that ballot is our referendum for East by Six. So we encourage each of you to exercise your right to vote. Um, a lot of people paid a very high price in this country just to give you the opportunity to go have a voice. Amen. So I encourage each of you, regardless of whether I agree with your voice or not, I want you to go exercise your right to vote. We also have someone with us tonight that is very new to the community. And over the past couple of months, it's been very nice to see different people in our school system reach out to this person, and even though they're not hired by us, they're still part of the family. So with that said, Ms. Laura Lee, I would like to request that if you would come to the front that we have a token of our appreciation for you and being part of the Bane County Community Family. So if you would come forward. It's hard to follow Miss Miller. <laughs> she touched on everything. But anyhow, I've thoroughly enjoyed our meeting this evening. Really have. Uh, Miss Collins and uh, Miss Danner, I don't know why you're nervous. You're among family. You know, if you make a mistake, we'll just like and go on. You know, that's the way it is here. I hope, and I think it is. Mr. Roof, congratulations. I know you do a great job. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, congratulations to you, and I know you do a great job, too. Congratulations to our uh, elementary schools on your award. Uh, you deserve it. And I look forward to seeing the middle school get their award and the high school get their award. Uh, I just appreciate everybody being here. Uh, well, no, I won't. No, I won't. Anyhow, I started to tell you something, but I won't. I'll let you find out the hard way. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate being up here with these men. And uh, Miss Collins, I'll tell you, I got to tell you and Mr. Roof, 
I think I enjoyed Jordan's presentation the most that I have enjoyed any presentation lately because, because what it stands for. And that's the children. Getting on their level where they can learn. You can't learn if you're not on level. And you know it for sure. You've been in the school system long enough. You got to get the child's attention, get with them, and I just, this is the best school system in Georgia. Mr. Poe. Yeah, again, thank, thank everybody for being out tonight. Um, Ms. Danner, great job. And it was me bringing up uh, history things because I'm going back in my age, you know, <laughs> of being on that field. And not that it's a bad thing that's gone. It's just I have a lot of memories of being there when there was no football field at the high school. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's a, a lot of good time. And uh, Miss Katie Robertson, how um, – proud I am of her to see all the teachers that would be mentors to her or if that's the correct word that was giving her accolades knowing that she was gonna she could be that and so I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of her and uh, the thing that I'm seeing lately is uh, you principals uh, can tell me if I'm wrong but student morale is like through the roof I mean, I've been to the elementary schools, to middle school, to the high school, and just our last work session, the two young ladies that I had, you know, I've had students in the past that impressed me, but I had two young ladies that just went over the top, best, best time I've had with them, and everywhere you go, just morale is, is up. Um, Y'all know how much I want vocational, that's what I call it, that STEM building up there to be productive, but I see so much excitement in those rooms when I go in there. There's, those kids are so excited. So I think it's, a, it's at a high level, and um, I see the band. You know, it's not as big as it was when, when I was in high school, but look at all the uh, extra acti after-school activities that we have that are going on that so many kids are involved with because uh and it's running um so efficiently that uh I, I'm, I'm just grateful for all the the things that they have available to them and uh, to see them excited about it and uh so it's just a i think we what is it the best place in this united states of america to live Amen. is blue ridge Georgia. And so y'all have a blessed evening and, and thank you for coming out. Well, they didn't leave a lot for me to add. <laughs> but I will um, add congratulations to our elementary school principals, uh, to Dr. Ruth, Dr. Ranch. Thank you for representing us so very well. Um, exciting to hear the results of your study and your report tonight uh, moving forward with our, with our approach to teaching. Uh, we know that there is a need for assessment, but recognizing that all of our students are individuals and they learn at different rates and different ways, we're getting to the heart of teaching. So thank you. I'm so excited to hear that focus moving forward. <clears throat> what is it? Congratulate that. I know that's congratulations, not the right word. Some of the planning is coming to fruition. Uh, Mr. Banner has done an incredible job. Amen. And these projects don't happen overnight. This has been years in the making, the planning process, the layout. And he's responsible for that, and he's done an incredible job. And what you saw in the, the presentation tonight is basically phase one. Um, phase two is already on the on the plan and ready to go. It will uh, hinge on the success, successful uh, passage of the referendum renewing our spots moving forward. And we're so very thankful for that. Um, it's allowed us to have the lowest education delivery in the state of Georgia. We'll go back. Uh, 
for eight years in a row. And we're still very proud of that. And I will tell you that any school system I have talked to in the state of Georgia is very envious that we are debt free. We're moving ahead with these opportunities to expand the horizons for our students. It's a blessing and honor to be a part of the Fannin County School System. And it's been an honor to serve. Thank you very much for your attendance tonight. We look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Up, up, up. Pardon me. Maybe. Maybe. Ms. Miller, Mr. Hawks just got here. He's going to can we get one more picture with Marlene? Sure. You want to go ahead and adjourn the meeting? Yeah, let's go ahead and adjourn. Okay, we've got a second. I need a second. Very well. All those in favor? We stand adjourned, but yes, we will have a photograph. Thank you.